Hi guys, Arthur here from Homeowner DIY. In this video, I'm going to troubleshoot a hydronic heating system. Now the complaint from the tenant is for the main floor to work, upstairs needs to be turned on. Since this is a zone system, which means every thermostat will only control one area of the house, what he's saying makes no sense. But the idea of this video will be to go over the basic parts of a system, what I found troubleshooting, and then how to go about fixing it later on. So what we'll do now is we'll look at our setup. All right, so our water supply comes down to here. This is our backflow preventer. water feeder so the supply is here and then we have our manifold so we have one two three four five zones the circle on this one is on the return side we've got our exhaust our damper water heater over here this is our uh, air intake for this mechanical room this green tube at the top, that uh, it has the supply going to one end and then it, the bottom end here connects back to the return. I have no idea what this tube is for. Gas, there is our aquastat there. Expansion tank, air vent. And then this is our relief. All right, guys, this is the tools list. So this tools list is geared toward a DIY or not a professional. So I want to use stuff that you're going to use for general other purpose stuff. So first of all, I have my finishing kit. This will have screwdrivers, crescent wrench, channel locks, Allen keys, that type of thing. I have a socket set. This will be for... Uh, socket screwdrivers a, a decent set like this will cover you for most things very important a multimeter for testing electrical circuits wire strippers a volt stick this is an electrical tester to see if there is power or not a light or a bunch of different types of light and then an extension cord so once again what you see here will cover you for most DIY troubleshooting when it comes to a hydronic heating system. Alright so this is our thermostat, we're on the heat setting. So it says 72, it's holding at 70. Alright we'll go down and check the boiler. So the middle zone valve should be calling for heat right now. So this handle should be loose with no tension on it. The pipe is not getting hot, but the handle was not in the auto position before. The boiler should be kicking on as well, and it hasn't. So the thermostat is calling for heat, but this zone valve isn't operating, and that is what the issue is here. All right, so we have our manifold. The only thing that's calling for heat right now is top floor. But because this is open, that means the water that's going to the top floor is also coming here. And that's why now this is toasty. So what we'll do is we'll take off the cover. So we have RH here and then W. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check for 24 volts. So this is ACV 200 on this one. And we'll see what it says. With the thermostat calling for heat, there should be zero volts between the RC and the W. That means the circuit is closed. If the thermostat is not calling for heat, you're going to get what they call a 24 volt system. In this case, it's actually 26.9. But as long as it's close to 24 volts, then you know your transformer is working. And at least right now, you can eliminate the thermostat as being the cause of the problem. All right guys, when there's no call for heat, this is our zone valve, so you have a lever here, and this should have resistance. You see how it has no resistance? So this is a manual open. I'll show you for the top floor that actually works properly. So this is the top floor, and, and you see the resistance, and how it springs back because it's spring-loaded. 
So I'm gonna take the cover off and then we're gonna take a look inside of the zone valve. All right, so for this zone valve, there's one screw here. Loosen the screw and then this whole thing will just slide off. All right, with the cover removed, this is the zone valve motor. There's an end switch here. So when you turn on your thermostat, that is going to activate your zone valve. It's gonna open the zone. When the motor opens, the two uh, red wires back here, there's an end switch. It's going to close the end switch, and that's going to kick on the boiler. Now, because this is already open, the zone valve, I think, is seized open. But what I'm going to do, there's a screw here, and there's one on the other side. And what I'm going to do is take off the zone valve motor. Alright guys, so it's probably really hard to see, but it's stripped on the inside, which means the motor and the actual valve itself, there's no mechanical connection anymore. Alright, so I'm going to hold the manual open, and I'm going to see, because now the end switch is supposed to be closed, we'll see if that kicks on the boiler. No, the boiler has not kicked on. All right, so opening the zone valve manually doesn't kick on the boiler. The thermostat upstairs doesn't kick on the boiler. So I believe that uh, the end switch is not working anymore and the motor is stripped out. And that is another problem in itself that it's not uh, actuating the zone valve. All right, so this is our lever. And it'll move this piece here, and then this is the end switch. So when we close this, do you see the gap? It's not closing the end switch. So I'm going to try to manually open it by pushing down the end switch. So here I'm using a file to hold down the end switch just to make it more comfortable. I would say hold this down for 90 seconds to 2 minutes to do a, a nice solid proper test. Alright, so I drew out uh, this setup here. So the boiler is here. We have the exhaust here. This is our supply and then the return comes somewhere over here as well. So we have 120 volts line voltage and then we have a transformer step down that uh, goes down to 24 volts. The 24 volts is for the thermostat and then the burner circuit over here that we're not going to get into. But for this particular problem, what was happening was uh, water was coming up. So the upstairs, which were one of these two, when that opened, because the main floor in the middle was already open, water was going to the main floor and heating up the main floor as well as upstairs. So if you want to heat up your main floor, you also have to heat up upstairs. If you want to heat up upstairs, you also have to heat up your main floor. So this is inefficient when it comes to energy. So over here we have, we have the uh, master bedroom, that was one zone. So each thermostat will be a zone. Each zone valve is connected to a thermostat. So you can either count off how many zone valves you have or how many thermostats you have in the house. Zone valves is easier because they're all in front of you in one area. But you have from your transformer, you have 24 volts that go to one side of the thermostat. When the thermostat closes, you have 24 volts that go to the other side of the motor on the zone valve opening it. When the zone valve opens, it's going to close that end switch and that's going to send 24 volts from here to the burner circuit over here. And that's going to kick on the boiler. So if you closed the end switch manually and it's not working, either the end switch is not working or there's a break in the wire somewhere in the circuit and that is what the problem is. So when it comes to troubleshooting electrical on a heating system, it's 24 volts. So I guess technically you don't need a gas license, but 
if you're not sure what you're doing then it's probably better not to touch but 24 volts it's not even enough to zap you it's so low 120 volts you'll feel it if you do get zapped all right guys i have finally finished off with this so after talking to the tenant here this zone valve and then this zone valve needs to be replaced whatever these things are maybe somebody can tell me i've never seen a connector like this but when i was messing with this zone valve here that kicked on the boiler which means there's loose connections here you see something like this that there's no moret even so this is a moret so this is not done correctly you've got bare wire showing right there this is a god-awful mess anyways what needs to happen here is this all needs to be taken apart cleaned up and put back together properly because if you have loose connections you're gonna run to issues so what we'll do now is no resist job all right guys so that concludes this job so really what wound up happening here was whoever did the wiring or changed something later on uh they didn't do a very good job with loose connections you'll have all sorts of strange things happen the thing about electrical problems is they can be baffling they can make no sense whatsoever when you have a water type of problem i mean if something is leaking you're going to see it when it comes to electrical if you have a broken wire or something that's not connected properly you don't see anything and then you have to test one by one so at the end of the day here, I've come to the conclusion that loose connections are the problem. I think some of these zone valves need to be replaced anyway based on the uh, damage to the gears and the other stuff I saw. But here, uh, basically it needs to be taken apart and rewired. Everything I see here, the morettes, the way they're put on are, is no good. The way that the wires were stripped is no good the way they're tied together is no good just everything here this is an ongoing story with this house i've been here multiple times and when it comes to plumbing it's just every step of the way is somebody that wasn't qualified with what they were doing the time on this job the time was about three hours uh that is going up and downstairs checking thermostats checking the transformer, checking all of these other things to make sure that they can be checked off the list. It can be time consuming to troubleshoot electrical issues because like I said, sometimes they just don't make any sense. The cost of this job, uh, the cost was really nothing. I've already, I already have this stuff. What I am gonna recommend is three out of the uh, five zone valves that aren't working properly be replaced. And then all the wiring, the thermostat wiring to the motors, that be taken apart and then redone with morets and done properly. When I was actually trying to uh, remove the motor and end switch for one zone valve, as I was untwisting the wires, the boiler was kicking on and off. Well, that means wires are touching each other intermittently and it's kicking on the boiler. I guess on a positive note here, because this is happening, that means there is continuity. There's no breaks in the wire, but loose connections is just like a break in the wire. So if you're jiggling something around, moving it, and something is like a light is going on and off, that means you have a loose connection somewhere. So guys, this was meant to be a basic overview. I'm sure for a lot of people, it still doesn't make much sense. I'm going to try to add to this with some time. I'm hoping that uh, I will be given the go ahead to go ahead and fix this issue, which I will also make a video for. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I hope something here is going to help you to become better when it comes to troubleshooting a heating system. Guys, until next time, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next project.